Very good morning to you, Susan. What did you find? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Tell us what you found in this study that you can work with now and, and, and help um, us well, we have recover. Well, we have begun the study. Um, the study, we, what we really understood was that there was uh, a, what we call opportunity costs when the COVID-19, when all the health services focused on COVID-19 or even shut down. And what we understood was that there were things like children's immunization, antenatal clinics where people were not accessing services. And um, we are very concerned about what the possible impact could be um, down the line. So it wouldn't maybe happen that day, but it would happen down the line. So this study called Measuring Opportunity Costs um, for uh, COVID-19 Interventions on Mothers and Children and um, Chronic Diseases. And we have three study partners. Um, the one is the Agent Court um, MRC Center. The other is a, a group called Enzincha. And the third is um, from Harvard School of, of Public Health, Chan School of Public Health. And the idea is that we're bringing together all these disparate people so that we can look at this in a number of different places. So Agent Court is in Kumalanga. Um, and we're looking at it in Kumalanga, but also in Soweto and Johannesburg. All right, what do you plan to do with this information? Obviously, an important focus, too, has been the impact on mental health. Exactly. So what we plan to do, there are a couple of things. Um, the most important is to influence policy going forward. So we know that this is going to happen possibly, first of all, we're going to be living with this virus for a while. Um, so how do we address the virus without impacting so badly on other services? It's going to inform this policy around health services. How do we deal with it? It will inform communication. So we're wanting to know how people are feeling, how they've handled it. Um, what are the issues? Are people afraid to go for services? Is it that the services are closed? Is it too expensive? All those issues that come up, we need to be able to understand so that they can be addressed. All right, and are we well positioned for the second wave? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, we actually, in a, in a way, n not that the 19,000 deaths are nothing, but, uh, and possibly it could be even 40,000 deaths, but in a way we managed to handle the first wave without totally swamping all of our, our facilities. So we can hope that the, the facilities can cope. Um, what I find is the real problem is that people are really struggling to, to keep to the, the, the rules, if you like. And um, this threat of lockdown, um, if we don't wear our masks, I find is a very, it's, a, it's not a good way of communicating with people. Really, you need to think about ways to make the choices the easier choices. Um, so if I had to choose um, to stop second wave, I would look at stopping the big spreader events like um, huge big funerals again, um, stopping nightclubs, um, doing some sort of more liquor control because that seems to really help spreading the virus um, and, and things like that that are not going to really massively impact on the economy um, nor on people's lives but really make a difference. And the sort of <laughs> findings that you managed to draw out in this study? I mean, how does that parallel with what we're seeing happening in the world of science at the moment when it comes to some sort of cure? Well, you know, I think, um, you know, South Africa was very different um, from the North um, and in how our epidemic rolled out. We don't really understand why, um, but it doesn't fit with the pattern that's happening in the US and even in Europe. So it's very difficult. And of course, most of the science is coming from the North. Mm. Um, people have the resources uh, and the time. Um, so we, we, that's why we're trying to look at how did it pan out here um, and what can we do next time. Yeah. Hopefully, even, or hopefully there will be a vaccine, but even with a vaccine, we can't afford to, to immunize everybody. So there's going to be some discussions that need to be had, I believe, with the general population around who can have the vaccine, who should get it, and how are we going to deliver it. Um, and my feeling is that we're going to be focusing probably on healthcare workers first, 
elderly people, and then people who are at high risk. But some people argue that we should be focusing on the people who are doing all the spreading. So we should be stopping the people, the super spreaders, if you like, and that might be the young people. Yes. So maybe, there's a lot of discussion the, around how this should happen. Yeah, maybe that's the dual approach that's needed. Susan Goldstein, very good to talk to you. Thank you.